you know, someone like you has so many stories and just like you're saying, like these memories and getting sidetracked, like I would not be able to concentrate <laughs> because you're living these experiences, right? Like these are lived experiences and memories with yourself, with your wife and, and the time that you've spent across yeah. different countries. Um, Actually, I have to call her out. She works about, you know, five meters away from me in the other room. And often yeah. I'm like, Marila, come over. Look, look at that picture. Come on, guess, where is that? And she's like, uh, trying to remember the name of the valley or whatever. Um, yeah, you, I get a lot of pangs of emotions, you know, uh, especially when, when it was tripped with the family or stuff like that, you know, um, with my kids. And like recently I, I went through... Um, all the, uh, we took a year off in 2016, 2017, where we traveled. Uh, we, we, we bought a van in India and crossed, crossed India and then, um, you know, part of India and then uh, went to Sri Lanka, flew to Hong Kong, crossed China by train, ended up over the Hunjera Pass into Pakistan, spent two and a half months, almost three months in um, Hunza Gojao with my kids. And that was four or five years ago. And, um, and yeah, you get, you get, you know, it's, it's like, ah, I want to pack and go again. You know, I get completely, uh, constantly um, pulled right and left in terms of um, wanting to be a sedentary guy and, you know, planting a forest, uh, you know, um, but also yeah. being, and then, and then uh, being ready to just uh, go and walk for two months with my kids, you know, and buy a donkey and just go for it. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's remarkable. Um, like, I'd be curious to kind of understand how long was that road trip that turned into? That um, was a year and um, that was a year. And uh, yeah, we, we were then living in Turkey and we had been thinking about it for a while about doing, um, I'm trying to remember, but one big thing is that we were, Marela and I were, were motivated enough, had enough confidence to do homeschooling on the road yeah. for a year. Um, and, uh, and, and that, that, that eventually led to what we're doing now, where they are homeschooled constantly, we're even though we are sedentary. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so, so that lasted, uh, we were gone for, for a year and, um, and um, yeah, that was that was one thing that we needed to tick off uh, with the kids. And we also kind of have in mind of doing it one more time before Iluka, my older son, is too old. Uh, so, yeah. So I hope to do that again in a couple of years. How old are they at this point? Uh, 14 and, and nine. Today or at when you did this? No, no. Oh, at this point, at this at point, point. Um, uh, they would have been five and nine. Five and, and uh, five and nine, and uh, we crossed the Darkot Pass in uh, Yasin Valley, going into uh, uh, Chitral, uh, almost five thousand meter pass over a glacier in August with my five-year-old son. It was amazing. <laughs> they were like so full power at night. I remember after we did the pass, and it was a long day. We woke up at six. You know, it was freezing cold, and um, we went over the pass. Um, and uh, and then when we arrived in the evening, we were shattered with Marela. We were like in bed, you know, and they were bouncing up the wall in the tent, you know. Uh, they 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 have more energy than kids have more energy than 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 what you think in these conditions. Uh, they get pumped up by by realizing they are living something maybe a bit unusual and uh, meaningful, and and uh, you know being exposed to such raw nature, they just build up so much energy, and th so that was that was quite that was great. You know, when after our initial conversation, I wanted to kind of do this podcast a little bit differently, and like you know, unpack different stories, unpack different lived experiences, and and things that you're doing today, um, and have a conversation just to kind of you know just just riff off like. I love talking to you. I think it's going to be more fun. Um, and just understand and unpack different, you know, parts of your life and, um, yeah. and things that are meaningful to you. Now, the homeschooling element, if we kind of go in that for a second, mm -hmm. 
it's fascinating, especially in the time period that we're living right now, you know, where everyone is like on Zoom and Zoom schooling and yeah. all that stuff. And the experiences that you're being able to provide via homeschooling. And there's this other element of homeschooling called unschooling as well, which I've been learning about a little bit. Yeah, I don't like the terminology too much. I, I like self-directed learning. That's what we're doing with that's the kids. That's a kid. cool one. Yeah that's, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like that. I like so that. Unschooling, yeah. it sounds like we're going against the school and against the idea of teaching kids. And it's not it. I think it's not a good marketing uh, uh, word to, to make this popular. Yeah, when you think about but self-directed yeah. learning, that's what we're doing with our kids. But see... When you were talking about this road trip, and, and, and you mentioned this unconventionality, or the, that, that it's unconventional, but what is convention? Why is convention really? what convention <laughs> yeah. is, you know? Why do we have to, again, on terminology, yes. why do we have to use this as yes. convention? Because, I mean, that is not our, like, our ancestral, ancestral lived experiences. True. We have changed yeah. as we've come yeah, yeah. in the past, right? And I can't even imagine the amount of learning of empathetic, like empathy of real value of lived experiences of human nature, of, of interacting with others and, and, and the respect of nature and, and how to kind of build resilience that you get on the road. Yeah. I am like in awe that you were able to do this with a five and a nine year old at that point in time. And like, you know, be on the road with a wife and, and, and two kids and you guys are, are working together. It's, 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 it's almost annoying that people think that they should be in awe with this, uh, really, because it's, it's not difficult. It's not difficult. If you break it down on a day by day, starting in the ID and then in the morning where you have to, you know, buying your ticket, deciding where to go, you know, how are we going to finance this, etc. And then, and then it's, there's nothing spectacular. There's nothing, there's nothing difficult at all in this. I'm not trying to bring it down. It's, it's, it, but in our situation, with our life and the type of freedom we we um, we made sure we would keep, that came with profession, with you know the, the 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 type of jobs we're deciding to do, and that we freelance and that we can live on the road and um, or not. Um, if you have this setup, um, it's it's very easy. But if your life. Uh, um, is taking control over you kind of, or if, if the institutions that, that govern our lives start to take control over you, then it's much harder. But in my situation, it wasn't difficult. In our situation, it wasn't difficult at all. So there's nothing like to be in awe about. It's just like, uh, it, it's, it's, it's really not difficult. It's just like, really, it's, it's, I always think of, you know, the greatest ventures that I've ever done and whatever. They have done, they, they have not been done on one day. It's just a small step. And when you do, when you break down big things that impress you um, and you realize uh, each little steps that leads to these big things, it's not difficult. Nothing is difficult. You know, it's, it's an incredible thing that you just said over here. And it's something that I've been like reflecting upon more and more lately, which is the idea of smaller steps, which make a bigger mm -hmm. goal. And retroactively, you can understand that, wow, I achieved this. But when you look back at it, it was only exactly what you said, those smaller decisions. And in that moment, you didn't know where you would end up. You didn't, you didn't have an idea that you would live this magnificent life. You didn't know that you would have this career or whatever. At that yeah. point in time, we're just living. And, and one of the things that I kind of want to ask you as well around this and, and the stuff that I've been reflecting around is, is the fact that, you know, we, we were never, some people are aware and are able to kind of Sorry, I have to stop you one second because I realize why I get annoyed by this. Well, you know, it's also the same way that I get annoyed when whenever I see of the places where I go, you know, and I bring and I brought my kids in it. You know, I've been to Pakistan with my kids or whatever. And people are like, isn't that dangerous? That annoys me to the same level. That annoys me to the same level. It's like you have. Why? Why is it dangerous? Why? I don't know. I've seen it. Where do you have seen it? I've seen it on TV. And you fucking believe everything you see on TV? <laughs> completely. Excuse my French. Um, you know, since when? You have a guy in front of you right now that has been brought his kids 
I'm, am I being nuts? Am I going to bring them to a place where I think their lives will be in danger? Am I going to decide no to go homeschooling because, because I'm selfish and I want to be free? And so therefore my kids will be homeschooled. So I have more freedom in doing what I want or not. Some people get afraid with homeschooling. Oh my God, the kids are home all day long. Um, no, 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 no. I, I want the best for my kids. Uh, and, and I don't want to put their life in danger. I don't want to put their education, their future in danger. And all these decisions are weld, weld, uh, they are, they're weighted carefully. And then, and then onward we move, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, I completely am with you on this. It's, it's and, rethinking. Uh, it's, it's, um, we are brought up in this world with all this insti institutionalized <laughs> of, of our life that govern our life uh the school uh uh you know the banking work, system the way work things. works and, and you're like looking at it and you're like hey um yeah i'm just eating it because they're feeding it to me but let's think that through a little bit you know and we live in a world where we can actually because what we're doing now for example with self-directed learning and the kids and homeschooling that could that would have been i think i think that would have been a lot harder 20 30 years ago uh, where knowledge wasn't so readily available. I was so go you have exactly, to, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to shut me up because I talk too much. No, no, no. That's no. That, <laughs> it's brilliant because you know that's the way we get to like the cool, interesting things. And I okay. really ag agree with you because it was like you know it's 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 so true that. 20, 30 years ago, it would have been much more difficult to be able to do this. And you really needed to be that person who is motivated, has the ability to take himself accountable and do all of these things. Today, yeah. there is so much information out there and we truly can, we have the ability and the power to lead. I was having this conversation just yesterday, actually, um, and I'll tell you what it was, but we have the ability today, sorry, to live the life that we create for ourselves. We no longer have to work in the system to fuel the system. We can create the system, we can make the system work for us, yes. is what I mean. Is you can start to mold your life into a format that is aligned with your values. So if you want to stay home, you can do that and you can mm -hmm. create a career that self sustains you in that manner. Yeah. If you want to travel and you want to take jobs here and there, you are able to do that. To do that again, because of the tools and because of the advent in technology that's, that, that has kind of come on with, with different platforms that kind of give you that one-to-one -one direction and that one-to-one -one kind of um, the ability to have an audience. Second, yeah. also one of, one of the things, I'd love to kind of hear you, but one thing that I wanted to add in this was the conversation that I was having yesterday was in Pakistan, at least, specifically this guy's a, he's an entrepreneur, he's opening up a FinTech bank in Pakistan and he's making it simpler to, to accept payments. And mm -hmm. one of the things um, that we were discussing was that, you know, a population of, let's say, 200, 220 million people, it's still very difficult to be able to live in this globalized world, to be able to format the life that you want to live, because to some extent, there are not as many opportunities, or if there are opportunities, they're not as lucrative. So they don't give you the option to be as open, as flexible um, as you can as a human being, let's say, coming from the West, and you have your Western bank accounts, and you have the ability to live that way and live anywhere else in the world. So the uh, the the way for instance them coming in with a with a digital bank and what that allows you like we we truly today don't have to be a developer an engineer but we can engineer our own lives using the tools that exist today yeah 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 if if we live in the right if we are born in the right environment this is the main issue when when i hear you talking it's like you and i are incredibly privileged uh, I think, and, and and I always think like, how can we um, um, adapt this to 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 a, a, a less privileged environment? Uh, and and that's that's a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Uh, and and I think that's it's it's I'm always wary of of clothing myself into that bubble, you know, of thinking that um, and not realizing that that uh, not everyone can can choose this path. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I'm I'm born, I guess, in the right country and and the right social strata and whatever that allowed me to, you know, I took care of myself and these are all decisions and and I went through incredible doubts and and struggle that I could have gone through on a different level and this but but um, 
but yeah, it's it's always interesting to see how you could um, downgrade that kind of um, refusing institution, not refusing institution, but rethinking institution. If you are not um, born on on the right side of the of the pond, you know, completely. And you know, in that, what I'd be curious about is is also you're completely right. Like we're still in this bubble. Like I'm definitely in my little um, bubble of of how. But do you do you think that technology has helped democratize that bubble and get more people, especially with like now cell phones and data plans. I mean, there's still a lot of parts of the world that don't have this. Um, and you're not able to, you know, get as much out of the system that you might want. But do you think technology has helped at all? I think technology is whatever you want to make out of it. It's not, um, there's no answer to that. I mean, it can be great, it can be bad. And, and it's, it's really uh, just, it's turning into an addiction that you have to just be wary about, you know, uh, uh, where we are relying. And in my life, I try to balance this out, to force myself to be out in nature um, on a daily basis and do something with my hands. Uh, again, because I have the luxury to do it nowadays. Um, but um, but but I, I'm very wary of this um, this 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 um, thing we're getting sucked into, you know, vacuumed into um, that that is uh, in the long run not healthy uh, for our relationship as as uh, between us. And uh, um, so I focus on on that um, addiction part and you know possibly negative influence. Uh, I, I pay attention to it. And then I try to find uh, something that pulls me out of it in my life on a daily basis. On a daily basis is, is I try to, you know, um, that's my, it's, it's another struggle, you know, that I didn't foresee 20 years ago when I started to, to be yeah. a photographer, um, you know, um, but, but then again, you, you, the life I'm living uh, without technology, I could not have been able to live it. I would have needed to be uh, near, uh, you know, in easy access of an urban place where where I can process my film. I need yeah. to ship it, or I need to go to France to meet with the editor of this and that. And nowadays, it's just like I'm shooting digital. I send it over, and boom, I can live anywhere as long as I have an internet connection. It's it's mad. It's mad. And the way I live as a photographer, no, you know, photographer from the, you know, in the 80s, 90s, they, they, they could not live like that. It was a very different. Um, um, so it expand my freedom for sure. You know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's, that's what I was kind of getting at, right? Like it, it has, if you use it correctly, that is a, the very key term because there is a lot of dark side yeah, a lot of a be. lot of dark side. If if Addiction. I'm not in the right mood, and I open social media or whatever, and I see all this great work that is being done, and you know I'm a self doubting guy, so I just like it brings me down in the morning. I'm like, fuck, what am I doing? Uh, I'm just sitting around here, you know, planting vegetables. Uh, <laughs> you know, That's so you life. have to be like, this is a constant. It's, it's a teacher also of, of ego and of, you know, uh, you know how it is, social media, for example, just, you know, showing the bright side of things. And, 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 and I'm, I'm wary of sometimes putting, um, you know, inspiring images on social media that will inspire people, but will also bring down some people somewhere in the world. Because they're also a photographer that aspire to one day live off this profession and they see my work and they are like, you know, uh, struggling bec like, like I was once and um, or they are not aspiring photographer, but there are people that are stuck in urban cities now with this situation where they are, you know, and they are seeing this, this breath of fresh air and they know they can't get it and it makes them feel uh, miserable and, and um so I always try, you know, if I can talk to people about it or even in my captions sometime to bring down the extraordinary um, or, or not extraordinary, but, you know, this, this magical kind of side that yeah. photography can have to a more like normal, like, you know, I hadn't washed for two weeks or, you know, I mean, you know, like, you know, it wasn't like glamorous, like it can look on the picture. This is the problem with photography. 
it can really uh, um, you are not you are seeing what the photographer sees, but you don't back up on the camera and what's on going on. The, the amount the of work and, and the amount of struggle. thought and the amount of struggle that yeah. went into actually of doubts, of doubts, yeah. of it, doubts, it, a lot of it, doubts. It, it, a lot of constant doubts. That's, that's <laughs> a lot of that doubts, a lot of like, you know, freelance. I don't know. Am I going to make money next month? You know, money doubts. Uh, 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 you know, is my work meaningful? Is it, is it, am I being a good person? Am I, am I respectful? Always constantly like worried about, am I, you know, also social media. I'm going to have people telling me all this stuff and I have to, to just uh, put my filter on and, and decide what is to be a, uh, taken uh you know uh, listen to carefully or what is just like some rant that is nonsense and and so it's um uh, constant test in the age of social media i think everyone has an opinion and everyone is able to share it and everyone is able to mm -hmm. take someone up or take someone down right and the, the dark side is that you can troll someone and really make them feel those doubts and those doubts yeah. and that inner critic is in everyone you know that little freaking shoulder little person who's just like oh you're not good enough oh you can't do this oh you're not like it's there for everyone and social media mm. kind of when you see it and you're not able to kind of go back and it, it's also a point that you made before and that point was was a very beautiful point where you said like you know retroactively you don't sometimes see the the points that you were doing the work that you were doing to kind of get to the point that you're at today it's the same thing right like yeah 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 you can't just look at the final product. Like it's the same thing in entrepreneurship. Oh, no. People see like, oh, Elon Musk is Elon Musk, but did you see that yeah, yeah. he's bankrupt like no. times? And I have people writing to me and say, hey, can, how can I be a National Geographic photographer? And my answer is like, don't don't want to be. You should not want exactly. to be a National photographer. You should want to be a photographer that tell meaningful stories. And I never wanted to be a National Geographic photographer. If it comes your way, great. And if it doesn't, who cares? Do meaningful stuff with your work. Follow your heart, have passion in it, and 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 find ways to not stray off your passion and the reason why you came to that field. That's that's also problematic. Um, don't let money, the temptation of of more you know well paid job that will make you stray off the real reason why you came to photography. Uh, don't let that happen to you if you can. Um, yeah, you know. Um, there's this quote, I think it's, it's by Rumi or someone, which says, like, when you start walking, the path appears. And too many times, I mean, oh, yeah. I've seen this for, for myself as well, where, like, That's a good one. Yeah. I get scared because I don't know, I don't, there's no certainty in this life. There is nothing. You do not know. You cannot control uh, your surroundings. You cannot control people. And the chances of you, even if you take a chance, the chances of the the chances of Ahmad ending up in the street begging for food and going starving and stuff is zero. There is no chance in the world with the situation you are in now, with your knowledge. There is no chance. So what are you doubtful of? Just go, 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 go. You have one life. Exactly. Go. <laughs> go. I'm like you know always like. I have friends that have, you know, that have told me over the years that I know since my university time or whatever, and they've they have told me over the years, like they wish to do that. They've been passionate about, you know, uh, music and they want to be, you know, like work on radio or whatever. And, 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 and no, they are, you know, doing another job that has nothing to do with it. And they don't find the confidence to jump. And I just don't understand how it's possible. You know, it's, I think, it's the, it's it's the environment that we live you know it's like you want uh, like you you have been or people have been conditioned that you need to want no but what uh, stops I mean, you I, like is it is it your, your the, the the feedback from your 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 close friend your family that are going to be like ahmad are you out of your mind you know is, is it is it afraid that you're not going to have financial security in the future for your old days is it is it what can possibly stop you but from, okay. from going into your passion into, I don't know what it is. You know, we can talk about it. Watch out because the interview is going to flip. I love it. <laughs> because that's my job. <laughs> I love it. Brain. I love it. This is, this is one of the funnest things I'm doing because like, you know, it's, 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 it's never me who's being interviewed or never being questioned, but I love this. Now, yeah. you, you know, sometimes, for instance, we don't get to 
because of customs. Like, I'll give you an example, right? Like, I, I'm in Dubai right now. Mm-hmm. And in Dubai, you are conditioned wherever you, it's a casino. You are no. conditioned to purchase, to consume, to wherever you look. You're conditioned just... and you're also air conditioned. You don't even know what temperature it is. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's no windows, yeah. no clocks, you know, it's just oh, yeah. buy, buy, oh. buy, buy, yeah. buy. Oh, yeah, so full on. Being able to kind of put yourself out of this and, and you know, like, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like, for me, the first real world, like, real, real world interaction that I had was when I moved to Canada. That's when my eyes were like, whoa, there is a life. There are mm-hmm. people that are working. There are people that do everything for themselves. The yeah. Self-sustenance is a thing. Yeah. Um, and not everything is pretty um, yeah. and brand new and, you know, gold yeah. encrusted. Yeah. And this, thank God, I used to fight with my parents. I was like, please do not send me to Canada. I want to go to school here. I want to finish off my university in another private school. And, and, and you know, that's it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no, 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 no. no. You, <laughs> you know, we see you. And you are not going the right path. Like you're not going the right way. And I I did not like it, you know, and Mm. I was forced into that that situation and it completely kind of flipped my understanding of the world and of interacting with people. And it allowed me, um, and I see this with, with friends and I see this with other people as well, like the ability to be empathetic and to be able to understand the other person, you need to be open as well. And this comes back to that idea of, I mean, you mentioned ego at one point, mm-hmm. and then it's also about the idea around sh- being able to shed your perspective and who you are and what you think you are and what you expect others to kind of, you know, come on to you. But being able to do that and being able to understand that, again, like on, in terms of the change, well, you the need only to pers- have enough trust into you to be able to shed things, you know, slowly and have enough experience and having been faced with enough doubts that actually turned out OK. You know, having taken the step to do something you you, you thought was, um, you know, risky uh, for your well-being or uh, and then having seen that it turned out to be a, a wonderful experience any hard experience that is beneficial is is uh, and that's why when you're talking about your experience in Canada I'm sure it was uh, in Canada I mean come on that's all right it's still, it's still <laughs> that's very good <laughs> <laughs> it's still very good but it's yeah. it's 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 you know it's it's being what you said right now being able to trust yourself right yeah. it's, it's a huge thing it's it's i mean if we look at society today if you look at the reports like this is i think the time period where we're having the most depression the mm-hmm. most kind of you know people kind of getting into severe depression and 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 feeling un, un um, unworthy like we all know of this i mean i've i've go through this my, my myself where i feel like i am an imposter I, I feel like i'm living a life that i am not deserving of Mm -hmm. how do you you know flip that and understand that no one knows what the fuck they're doing Mm -hmm. you only know as much as you're passionate about and you're able to do it you don't need to learn photography you don't need to learn finance i mean obviously the technicality is sure yeah the passion and i mean half the work that you do is i'm sure not even the actual clicking of the frame it's it's everything that comes before and yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I'm sticking to that job and I'm not getting bored with it. And I just could go on for a while, I think. I mean, I, um, um, it's because it's um, I deal with people and, and dealing with people the, the, is, is infinitely um, uh, mysterious in so many ways. Uh, while my camera is not mysterious. My camera, I know how to set the ISO, you know, I know how to anticipate light and be positioned and, you know, through years of experience, sure. But uh, where I'm doubtful is how this and that person is going to react and how to foresee, how to anticipate um, the future. I need to be able to read uh, the environment in a room or in a landscape or whatever. Uh, I need to tell you what's going to happen in two minutes from now because I'm going to have to be in that situation where I can be at the right spot to take the right picture, the, what I'm looking for. I need to, en- to understand the story that I'm to- talking about very deeply um, to be able to, to see how um, the environment and the, the theme of my story or what I'm trying to tell are going to find a spot to meet 
uh, visually. And, and so I'm, I'm anticipating, I'm writing the caption in my head before, the, before I take the picture. I'm writing the caption, literally, I'm writing the caption. If the caption is meaningful and fits the story, and if the environment, um, you know, visually is, is uh, partly beautiful, partly unusual, partly stimulating to, to you know, um, that, that is a big, that's the big cooking that is photography to me. It's far from just being taking the picture. It's really, a lot of these unseen forces kind of, you know, uh, these unwritten rules that uh, you've been told you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot go and behave like that in such country or like that. And, and over the years, you understand that uh, with respect, you're gonna be able to bend these rules. Uh, maybe initially, maybe sounding, maybe appearing a little bit borderline rude, but always um, making sure that at the end, uh, tidy up everything and give joy and give uh, uh, hope to the, your surrounding before you, you go and move on to, to somewhere else. Or, you know, because somebody else would come after. Uh, um, uh, another photographer might come after and I always want to clean up anything, any disturbance I might, I might have created. Uh, as respect for um, or before as well like it, it doesn't have to be after it because yeah. if it's someone before who has done something which has put someone on edge it's also the the job of i mean someone like you who is able to comfort to yes. empathize to yes. be able to get that yes. environment because it's not yeah. easy no no um, to be able to kind of get that so like the, the thing that you speak about with the unwritten rules i'd love to understand and I'd love for you to talk a little bit about vulnerability and being able to understand and engage when you're interacting with someone or interacting with a, per with a person or an instance or a, a surrounding or an environment. How do you look at vulnerability from the other and from yourself in order to kind of, you know, capture a story? Well, I don't want, I'm trying to think uh, how to answer that, but I don't want, I don't want to feel vulnerable in my head when I'm in a, when I'm on, like now I'm, 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 uh, um, I'm guessing that you want me to answer in terms of when I'm in the field, uh, like I have my photography hat on and I'm working on stuff and trying to take meaningful pictures that will break down stereotypes, you know, about this and that, uh, part of the world or people or whatever. That's kind of my favorite type of stories to tell. Um, I don't want to feel vulnerable in that case. I want to feel really strong in my understanding of my surrounding of these unseen forces I was talking about, you know, that are at play between, between people and me being here or between those people and me, whatever. But often I'm putting people in a, in a vulnerable situation because I have this thing around my neck that I'm not hiding, which is a camera and a camera is, is, is it can be scary stuff, you know? So that's where psychology plays in. And that's where you have to be, um, to be, um, to tread lightly. Uh, and, and I, I mean, it comes to like very, uh, it comes <clears throat> down to, um, technicalities, like I'm not going to walk into a house with my camera on my neck. It's going to be away in my bag. I'm going to bring it slowly out. I'm going to be, uh, um, um, but then I'm always going to, yeah, I was going to say I'm going to be quiet, but it's not true. I'm not going to be quiet because you see me, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to be myself and I might be a bit brash and loud and and, but I'm going to be myself and people smell from a mile away if you're not yeah. uh, being yourself. And I always, always um, uh, saw this, this potential vulner vulnerability that I might uh, put on, uh, that my, pe my, my uh, people around me might feel because of me being here. I want to break it down as much as I can by just... I don't want to feel like I'm somebody special. That's the opposite of what I want to be. So I'm going to go and, you know, I'm going to get the place of honor. Of course, I'm, I'm thinking like I'm seeing myself in Afghanistan, for example, entering a Wahi home where I've been so many times. 
far in the mountains of the Pamir, you know, and, and right away, please, my, you know, my dear brother, can you please sit next to the fire, you know, like best place and stuff. And I'm like, I can't, but actually, you know, I like, I would love to help and uh, in, in doing something or can I sit back there with the, you know, with, with you. And, and so, and it takes a lot of effort to make people understand that I'm, I don't deserve a special treatment, especially because it comes with a lot of tradition and a lot of culture in that part of the world. And all this slowly uh, peels off the idea that, well, this guy is, is, is a bit weird because he doesn't want to be uh, treated like, you know, uh, like the, the, the special guest that he is. Uh, it seems that he's just okay with, you know, running after the cows uh, with the herder back there. And, and, you know, he drinks our salty tea with us and seems to really enjoy it and doesn't want the fancy coffee, the Nescafe that we are, you know, and, and so that, that, uh, that will give a sense of um, brotherhood, sisterhood that uh, I just uh, love. And I feel really, uh, I feel it. I feel that I am brothers and sisters of the people that surround me. I am a hundred million percent. I feel it in my heart. It's, it's like it, 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 it can bring me you know, to tears. Like, like we are the same. We are the same, you know? <laughs> and that's also my battle as a photographer is in the expression that I can find in the, in the, in the, in, that I can express with my camera or the struggle or the beauty and, or whatever, it's, it's all mingled into just being human, you know? And, and so that's like my, um, uh, that would, yeah, that's that, that warmth that uh, I love to be in countries where you can hug people, where you can touch people, where you can be, you can be, you know, holding hands. I remember the first time when I lived in Pakistan for a year in Skardu, I lived in Pakistan in 99 to 2000, my, one of my oldest friends there, Mubarak, we walked in the bazaar and he started to hold my hand. And I'm like, I'm French, like, dude, you don't hold my hand, you know? <laughs> and they do that. And it was like, and it's not like holding the hand for two seconds. It's like, I'm going to hold his hand for like five minutes crossing the bazaar. And I'm like, I don't know. Okay, we'll try, you know? And so it started to break up all this misconception about I, that I have uh, also. And that's one wonderful thing about traveling is that it breaks down your um, your ideas of uh, what can and cannot be done in society and how to behave and you know. Um, in retrospect, then after living there for a long time, I got myself in trouble going back to France and behaving like maybe like a Pakistani, you know. And but I, I thought that was better. I liked it better. It's a lot more <laughs> warm, and you know. And, and so you go to Paris and you and you do that. Qu'est-ce que tu fais, mec? <laughs> exact, exactly yeah so anyway um yeah like like coming down to having learned the language um you know living in pakistan learning urdu on the way you know and then eventually learning wahi and and <clears throat> the kind of the, the the climax like the most amazing feeling where i feel like I've bridged the gap between me being a, a, a foreigner and, and, uh, and me being, um, uh, you know, showing that um, we, we are connected is, you know, uh, I, I walk into a, a Wahi home and there's this older woman that say, hey, my son, how are you doing? And she kissed my hand and I kiss her hand back. And, and this is how you do it in Wahi. And because I speak the language and, and because she feels it. she's tuned into the fact that this guy is just like, like uh, looking really comfortable around here, you know? And uh, he speaks our language and, you know, I'm like, yeah, because, you know, you're my mom, you know, you're my mom. You know, I'm your son, you're my mom and, and I'm happy to have a thousand mom, you know? I think that's the <laughs> and, most- And fathers. <laughs> it, that's the most human thing though, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's at the core of it, being human is the ability to being, of being able to love, right? Like you can go and you can, if you can truly, with your heart, love someone, it does not need to be like a wife or someone else or, or, or a kid. Just just be loving. Mm -hmm. What you said of, of how you can connect with people, I think you're able to see this in, in, in a few people easily. And it comes naturally 
to be mm-hmm. able to truly, you know, have a loving relationship and, and be able to respect someone else. For others, it's like a learned kind of skill. And yeah, because they are in this, 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 because they are, they haven't broken the, the, the you know, the, 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 the norms of society of these institutions. They haven't seen, they haven't realized that you don't have to, you know, I, of course, if everybody is like me in the world, we might have anarchy. I don't know. I mean, it might be a problem. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, if you tell me don't do that, I'm going to be like, oh, I'm going to do that now. <laughs> you, know, you shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> because why should I do that? Like, think about it for a second. Does that make any sense? Well, yeah, because I've been told that you shouldn't do that. Yeah, but why were you told that? Like, am I going to br- hurt anyone? I'm going to be irrespectful. Am I going to, you know, some rules, of course, uh, I respect 100 million percent. Uh, but a lot of the time is just. And so these people uh, that you were mentioning, they are, they are in this, uh, you know, unseen jail of, of, of rules and regulations and that is brought down by these institutions and their culture that was brought up um, when they, you know, uh, and, and, in, and it's is, is like burned into their brain. And it's very difficult. And traveling is, um, there's this quote from, um, I forgot who, but, you know, traveling is the best remedy against bigotry. And uh, what is it? You know that that quote? I've heard of it. I don't and know and, uh, and um, you know, basically, traveling is a remedy to open your mind and and rethink the world. And, and it really um, is. I uh, mm-hmm. I couldn't agree more with that, to be honest. Because I mean, also one of the things that you were mentioning just now was being able to understand the intricacies of, diff- of different cultures, mm-hmm. of being able to understand the, the, the that every single person has not been brought up with the same conceptions mm-hmm. of society, of life as you have. And that does not make anyone less or more. Mm-hmm. It just makes everyone interesting and unique and worthy of you know, being respected and, and of learning from. Because I think, you know, just like I was saying earlier as well, like my eyes were open when I went to Canada. They were really open when I started traveling more and especially when I started traveling alone. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, th- there's this moment where you, where you f- like, I remember specifically, like, I was in Japan and I felt very alone in Japan um, because, like, that was the first time where, like, it was truly, like, it was a place where not many, I mean, I, I don't think I had any English conversations other than, like, the first day I stayed at a hotel and yeah. the concierge knew a little bit of English. And, and, and after that, I was like, I don't want to stay in a hotel. I got an Airbnb and uh, I, I loved it. But, like, I want to just kind of give you this this story. The one it'll show you like the, the Japanese culture and, and stuff, but it, for me it's just like it's fascinating and something that stuck with me to this day of 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 selflessness. Um, mm-hmm. I was in Japan and I'm alone. I was there for four weeks, like walking around the whole city. I was walking like m- multiple kilometers a day, and it's and it was in Tokyo. It was a beautiful place, and like going to all of these restaurants and, and meeting people. And sometimes I would just sit down. And I'd go to these izakayas and there was this one particular one in Daikanyama where I sat down and I didn't know what to order. So it was always like sign language, like, yeah, like, mm-hmm. and it's all Japanese. And I'm like, okay, like it's, it's an izakaya. So like I order, order multiple things like tapas. And there was this guy who, who saw me just confused, couldn't speak a word of English. Yeah. But he, 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 he understood the confusion and the mm-hmm. lack of un, like what, what is going on with me. And he's like, like, you know, just he, at that point, he was able to understand me. And he's like, just don't do anything. He took the menu, he ordered it for it. me. He just, <laughs> he just ordered. Yeah, I want to be that guy. I want to be that had... guy. I, I try to be that guy whenever I see people like that. I try to be that guy. You should try to be that guy too. Completely. Um, and it's just, yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's so beautiful. And there's a book that I want to mention as well. But before that, I want to continue on. Like, there's this one, like, one little piece of, of, of Tokyo that was like, I remember I had two conversations in French in Japan. Oh, okay. One in, in Kyoto, one in, 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 in Tokyo. And I was like, what? like, this is very random. Like, I do not look like I speak French. Yeah. Um, especially not in Japan, you mm-hmm. know. And yeah. there's two people. And one of the people, one of the persons that I met was the, was the, the he, he worked on Frozen, this, this Disney or Pixar yeah. cartoon. 
And this French guy, very nice, we hit it off. And like, you know, he had this posse of, of, of Japanese men and women that were like around him all, at all points in time. And we went out, we were partying and like, you know, we got to experience like ska music and I didn't know what ska music was. And I had an amazing time. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning after like we go to this ramen bar, I'm like, okay, I say my goodbyes and I'm walking home. And, and in, in Japan, I'm a very tall, big guy. You know, yeah. like 5'11". Um, and I'm walking home at three o'clock in the morning and I had this MiFi, like this Wi-Fi device. And I wasn't able to use it because the battery ran out. So I didn't know where I lived. I was on Tachika Street and I'm just walking. Oh, and I'm, God. I, I'm at Shibuya at this point. Mm -hmm. And there's this couple coming towards me. I'm like, sorry, sorry. Can you like, you know, can you see this? Because I had a map that I'd taken a photo yeah. of. I'm like, can you please direct me to this, you know, this place? I'm, I'm mm -hmm. completely lost. I have no idea where the hell I am. It's three o'clock in the morning. I don't know what to do. And initially they got scared. They're like, sorry, sorry. And they, they yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that often like that in Japan. Yeah. But then they're like, okay, show me. They saw it. They walked with me. Yeah. Yeah. For like 20, 30 minutes, the oh, opposite wow. direction. Wow. And they took me to my door. Yeah. And I'm like, can I please do something for you? Can I like invite you for something? Can I give you like money or something? And they're like, no, thank you. Have a great day. And they bid me good night. This is like almost four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. Imagine the humanity in this yeah, couple yeah. that, you know, like yeah. this, this blatant trust mm -hmm. that like this guy is not going to do anything to me. And I just want to be good to society. Yeah. Oh, and, this, and imagine... many, this, this kind of thing happened to me a million times in Pakistan, for example, many times in Pakistan or in Turkey where I lived for seven years also. And uh, I mean, yeah. That's, but, that's always wonderful. And, and you know, the, imagine the butterfly effect that something yeah. like that has. Exactly. Butterfly effect. Right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. And yeah, it's not the, falling. It's not falling. It's, it, you know, it's not falling and disappearing. It's, it's falling onto you and it's staying. And now you're telling me and you probably, you, 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 it, it has to vibrate out of you and into something else. You cannot else. just let that Completely. happen. Of course. Because yeah, that I, is. I started Sorry, to do that in Turkey um, when where we lived. Um, you know, I'm like sitting on too much uh, kindness and generousness that people have have given me. That it's it's unbearable. I got to do something about it. <laughs> so uh, we started to be on this platform called Couch Surfing. Maybe you have yeah yeah, yeah heard of, of it. Yeah yeah. And we're still on it. And we host people that random people, often young and often, you know, and they just stay on the couch and we feed them and they can stay and, and move on. And, and, uh, and we met incredible people. And that's, you know, when I'm stationary, like I am now sedentary, it's my way of, um, of, uh, yeah, of, of, uh, uh, of giving back a bit, you know, along with photography, hopefully, you know, it's, it's, mm. it's just a beautiful thing. There's this book, um, that this author called Adam Robinson had, had, had the, uh, the honor of meeting him a couple of times. He wrote this book called The Great Game. Mm -hmm. And all it is, is like, it's a very short book. Um, if I can yeah. find it, I'll, I'll, I'll take a picture and I'll send it to you. And all it's about is like, this great game is about showing kindness, like little mm -hmm. moments of kindness. And it starts off by this, this little kid um, crying with her mother and this man seeing that and seeing um, a boutique, a flower boutique, I think it was also in France um, and buying a flower, giving the flower to the kid and just disappearing. Yeah. But that moment of like crying turned into, you know, a smile on a child, mm -hmm. on a child's face. And basically what the whole premise of the great game is being able to do at least like one selfless kind act and see how that affects society people around you how it affects your own karma how it affects your own kind of behavior yeah and oh, it yeah. puts you know like it, it does put you into this 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 moment um of just pure joy yeah, i yeah, remember that's that's the one thing i always uh, say to people if if i can you know sometime like I make sure that the one thing I leave behind, even you know, uh, is 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 joy. Um, you know, I'm taking all these pictures, and people uh, uh, 
you know, asking me like, what are you giving back to these people sometime? And, and you know, um, that's the one thing I always make sure that happens is, is uh, a moment of, of laughter or of, you know, uh, warmth and love at some point in me being there in their environment when they decide to take me in into their home is the least I can do, you know? So that, that is something I always, um, I always, uh, I can be a bit of a clown, you know, but. Um, <laughs> but that's beautiful, right? Like, I mean, yeah. I mean, imagine what a day or a moment of joy can bring to someone, mm -hmm. especially in this age of doubt and, and of depression and, yeah. you know, this mass sadness and uh, feeling unworthy. Like, this is something incredible. What I wanted to kind of, from this, when it, what I when you were speaking, there was this, this, this thing that you said around misconception and, and, and perception that we have of people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, especially when we go and we interact with the other, um, the other being anyone, you know, who is not from your background. We tend to have, because of news, because of whatever we read, this sense of who this person is because of the way they look, because of the way yeah, they talk, course. because of the way they yeah. dress. Yeah. And I feel like it takes away from human inter interaction because you're not able yes. to tr truly let go and experience what this person may or may not have to give. Yeah, and yeah. Sometimes we approach it from a negative lens where like, oh, this is a threat. Sometimes it's like, oh, okay, I don't want to take this person seriously. Hmm. how do you tackle that um in general because it's 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 very important I, like i feel like i to this day have to like recalibrate every single time every single time i go to a new place because there's always this thing like for instance for pakistan for me has always been like i remember growing up it's scary everyone is to be feared and you cannot interact that was how i grew up that's the so opposite I, of what i do <laughs> Exactly, exactly, all the time. Exactly I'm what I mean. Like, right? I'm and chatting up everybody there. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I love about this. Is that you're not yeah. looked on, you're not looked up as a weirdo when you do that. <laughs> I mean, you know, maybe a bit, but I don't care. No, no yeah, that's... it's passed on this misconception that passed on by media and by and by your culture, you know. Um, by your culture. Uh, I remember when I I, I walked across with Marela, we walked across Mongolia in 98 when I wanted to, you know, take some pictures to build up my portfolio. And uh, it was the, really, uh, and, and, um, and in Mongolia, it's considered rude to, um, to announce yourself before you walk into a place. So you might be walking in the middle of nowhere and there's this yurt, you know, this, this nomadic tents. The from tents the, yeah. um, and and it's, it's rude to kind of uh, a knock or you can't really knock because they're made of felt, but sometimes they're wood, whatever. Uh, and to knock and say, hey, can I come in? Um, because that, uh, uh, yeah, you're supposed to just walk in. This is the, this is the polite thing to do. Because if you're knocking on the door and if I'm knocking on your door to come in, it means that I doubt that you'll be able to host me, right? Wow. Uh, so, so I'm not being nice because I doubt that Ahmad can actually, uh, you know, have me sit down and give me tea and, you know, give me some food if I want to. Uh, I'm knocking because I'm like, Ahmad is, you know, he's not so well off and, you know, he might not be able to give me good hospitality. Um, and that's the, the uh, antipodes, the, the, uh, uh, the opposite of uh, uh, like my cultural background is. Uh, so at first I was like, these guys are rude. We would sleep with Marela in our tent in the middle of nowhere in the steppe of Mongolia. And a guy on horseback would pop in, would approach the tent, we'd go down on his horse, we zip up the head, the, the, the tent and stick his head in there, you know, and he'd be like, what the hell, dude? You know, so I'd be like, these guys are so rude, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, no, you know, you, you, because you don't understand. They live in this place where um, culture uh, was built up out of this emptiness that is uh, Mongolia in that case, and completely different from... Uh, my culture, which was built up around having a lot of villages and a lot of where you need this sense of where where a sense of privacy was was 
was very important as opposed to Mongolia, where where there's nobody. Basically, uh, it, it's it's three times the size of France, but there is like two and a half million people or so. While in France, uh, we are 70 million and it's three times smaller. You know what I mean? Um, and so that's culture. That's 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 the misconception that I was based on that was passed on by my culture. And then when you think of media, you know, if you start watching too much stuff, uh, you will be walking around Pakistan and having a guy with a big bear walking towards you and with deep set eyes. And you're like, he's going to cut my throat. And actually, uh, you know, uh, half an hour later, you are in his, in his, you know, he's holding your hand in the bazaar and, you know, you're his <laughs> buddy, you know, it's like, ah, oh, okay. So again, you get smacked in the face and, and you feel, you feel like a fool. Like, what was I to think? And I've been traveling all over Asia and I've, 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 you know, all over the world really. And, and, and I think I understand culture pretty well, you know, and the differences um, specifically in South Asia. Uh, but I get smacked in the face on a regular basis when I travel there, still holding on to these deep set, deep set ideas of, of um, you know, uh, yeah, I'm still being uh, jolted out of my ideas of like preconceived ideas that I might have about this and that. Um, and it's great. It's a way to keep you to keep young in your head, you know, yeah. because it also keeps you on your other thing you learn early on, but they kill upon they are still there for for all over your life. Um, and and yeah, it's 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 yeah, it keeps it's a fountain of youth for that matter to be able to be jolted out of your preconceived ideas. 